was 28 years ago, 1992. One fateful day I was attacked. An intruder entered and did irreparable damage. It goes by several aliases, but its initials are IBS. It is a mystery, an enigma. I was 30 years old, and I remember I woke up, I think it was a Saturday morning. As soon as I rolled out of bed, I thought to myself, something just doesn't seem right. And things went downhill very quickly from there. I started feeling real sick and nauseous, got the worst stomach ache that I ever had in my life, felt like I was going to die. Got very nauseous and just started throwing up a lot. Had other gastro issues, using the bathroom, diarrhea. And I think I just lost a whole lot of fluid. And I think that evening, late evening, I just tried to go back to sleep and I couldn't sleep. My heart was just uh, racing and pounding and just couldn't sleep, so I knew I had to do something. So I ended up going to the emergency room. I got to the emergency room and they gave me an IV because, yeah, I was dehydrated quite a bit. They gave me some medicine and I began to feel a little bit better, stayed there for several hours and went home. Uh, it took me a while to recover, maybe about a week, to regain my full strength and appetite. And they said, looks like I had come down with some type of food poisoning and I needed to get it uh, checked out with my doctor. And I did that and a couple of days later he referred me to see a gastroenterologist. And I thought, hey, things are just going to be uh, great from there. But to my surprise later on, I found out that uh, Western medicine is not a panacea. Finally, I went to see the gastro and he said, well, we really don't know what caused your uh, food poisoning. It could be uh, bacteria, it could be uh, giardia. Uh, we just don't know. So he gave me a Cipro, which is a broad-based spectrum antibiotic, and Flagyl, which is another antibiotic uh, to kill parasites if it was Giardia. So I took that, and after a while, maybe about a week, I think a week or two, I began to feel better, and I thought I was back to my old self again. But then about a month later, I noticed something weird began to happen to me. I like to exercise and do aerobics. I would go to a, a gym called President First Lady, which is very popular back then. I would do aerobics about three to four times a week, and I noticed whenever I got overheated or overexerted myself, the lymph nodes here in my neck would start to throb. And again, I said to myself, hmm, something's not right. This is not normal. I need to get this checked out again. So I went back to see the gastro, and of course his response was, well, I don't really know what's the cause. It could be a number of things. And he gave me a second round of Cipro and Flagyl. And I think um, that's what led to a lot of my issues along with whatever caused the food poisoning. My situation and symptoms kind of just progressively started getting worse and worse. I remember I would just wake up in the middle of the night um, just feeling nauseous like I wanted to throw up. And this went on for at least a year or two. Off and on I would carry medication with me wherever I go. Sometimes I'd have to pull over when I was driving because I had to go use the bathroom urgently. And then another other strange symptom started to happen. So gradually and slowly over time, I started to not be able to tolerate foods that I have, had eaten before my whole life. I think the first thing that uh, I had a problem with were dairy products, especially like ice cream and milk. I would just get a lot of real bad gastrointestinal issues, loose stool, diarrhea, gas, and bloating. And slowly over time, it led to sugary products, sodas, anything with uh, sugar, cakes and cookies. And then uh, 
after that, it just uh, be kept, uh, kept getting worse and worse. I couldn't eat uh, carbohydrates and starches like rice and breads and corn and potatoes. So it's, this was just really not a good situation. Little did I know that this was just the beginning of a long extended process that even lasts till today, 28 years later. And I remember this first stage was like, what is going on? How is this happening? Why is this happening to me? Hey, I just want it to go away. Please just make it go away. I guess I'm in good company. There was a guy named Paul, you see, much more greater man than me. There's nothing that brings you closer to God than a chronic health problem, especially one that seemingly has no exact cause, nor a specific cure. I was always a religious person, so I found comfort and refuge in prayer and reading the Bible and the different figures in the Holy Scriptures like the Apostle Paul, Jesus Christ, and others who suffered was something that I could relate to and gave me much needed solace. Oh, please just take this thorn away If even just for one whole day Promise I'll be good, I pray Just one day One of our first instincts is to go to God and pray for healing. Surely he will answer my prayer, oh, and do what I ask. He wants the best for me, right? But you know what? Sometimes he takes way too long to answer, and I just can't wait any longer. Hmm, it's funny how we resort to bargaining with God when we don't get what we want when we want it. I think there's a lesson here somewhere. Life goes on day after day. It seems this thorn is here to stay. My hope is gone like yesterday. God is taking too long. So medicine and doctors are going to be my saviors now. Hey, there's a cure or magic pill for everything that ails you. I've seen countless doctors over the years. You name it, I've seen them. The answers are always the same, though. Hey, everything checks out fine. It's just IBS. Here, just take this pill for your symptoms. That's all we can do for you. I remember one gastro telling me every time I would see him, Hey man, I wish I had a slim waist like you. Can you believe that? He just didn't get it. So eventually, despair and hopelessness slowly began to set in, accompanied by a little bit of self-pity. And I have to admit, there was a little questioning and anger directed at God thrown in as well. And then one day I see the light, not in color but black and white, the thorns still there but I don't care, I put his mind. But slowly, hopelessness and despair yield to acceptance of my plight and the realization that this may be my lot in life. Hey, I may not like it or understand it, and it doesn't seem fair, but you know what? That's okay, in a strange sort of way. I now see things in a new light. There's no color or hue to distract me. I now see things differently. 
Everything is stripped down to its stark simplicity, and I can now see things as they truly are. I need to learn to live with this, for worrying about it won't change a thing. God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. I find an inner strength and a peace that I can't explain, a calm in the midst of the storm. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving even. Let your request be made known to God and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guide your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Each day brings a bitter choice To feel sorry or just rejoice His grace is sufficient for me Now I'm free My perspective changes from not always focusing on my problems I try to do my best to block them out And not think about them it's a choice I can and must make each and every day. I can choose to feel sorry for myself or choose to rejoice in what I have and am blessed with. Wow, this is so revolutionary and freeing. I am no longer a prisoner trapped within the confines of my own mind and thoughts. I am transformed by the renewing of my mind. I focus on things I can do things I can learn, things to better myself, not just physically, but emotionally and mentally as well. In Tai Chi, I find a form of exercise I am now able to do, but also find so much more buried deep within. I learn about change and the need to accept it. I learn about internal strength rooting and grounding in the midst of relaxation. Ah, simplicity is the last step of art and the beginning of nature. Be soft yet not yielding, firm yet not hard. In music, I find a form of personal expression and a great form of stress relief, especially so when playing with others. When you are locked in, the individual parts become one and part of the whole, and the experience is transcendent. One, two, three, four. Photography, I find an art that promotes mindfulness and allows me to create my own art. It is an outlet to express what I see all around me 
as well as see things in a way I have never seen them before. Imagine die before I wait, pray the Lord my soul to take, straight up to those pearly gates, yonder. I don't know what is causing my health issues, and it seems, hey, nobody else does either. IBS is, is just a catch-all category when your symptoms don't fit in a nice and defined box. Will things get worse? When will they get worse? How bad will it get? Hmm, who knows? I know I don't. I've had to make peace with God and my own humanity a long time ago. I no longer fear death like I used to, but I can't say I welcome or embrace it. I have given it up as best as I can, and now I have changed my perspective. So we fix our eyes not on what is seen, but on what is unseen. Since what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. I'm not the man I used to be, I now accept my humanity. Is afraid of this fleshly thorn. I have changed. I'm not the same man I used to be those 28 years ago. The most discernible change is the weight loss I have experienced. I have lost close to 40 pounds since IBS first entered my life. You know, somewhat jokingly, I tell people, Hey, I have a surefire weight loss plan for you. And they get very interested. Then I tell them, all you gotta do is cut out all sugars, carbs, and starches, and surprisingly, they lose all interest. And to date, I have not had any takers on that, and I guess I can't blame them, because I don't think I would do it too if I didn't have to. It really sucks. So, how do I wrap this up? Well, hopefully I've become a little bit wiser over these 28 years. And here are some lessons that I have learned and I want to pass on to you. One, we think we control a lot in life, but I'll let you in on a little secret. We really don't. Tomorrow is not guaranteed. It all can be gone or change in an instant, in the blinking of an eye. Number three, it is not so much what happens to us that is important, but it is our response to what happens. We have a choice in how we respond and react. We can choose to become bitter or choose to become better, and I choose the latter. We need to find contentment in the place we are in life at this very moment. That doesn't mean we shouldn't strive to better ourselves and our situation, but we need to maintain the right perspective. And finally, you know what? Sometimes you just need to slow down and stop and smell the roses. And here's a song that I wrote that talks just about that. Help me to stop and smell the roses. This old world goes by so fast Help me to stop and smell the roses And live each day like it's my last We spend our time chasing rainbows Trying to find that pot of gold So worried about tomorrow We can't enjoy today So I say 
Help me to stop and smell the roses This old world goes by so fast Help me to stop and smell the roses And live each day like it's my last